Our next caller is Aaron from New Hampshire. Aaron, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, boys? How you doing? Good, good, good man. Hey, before I jump into my question, I wanted to say that I'll be at the NCI conference in Phoenix next week. So I was really excited to hear that Adam and Sal will be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah for right sure. On, man. Sorry, sure. sorry, hey. Justin's not coming. Hey, I know everybody's know. so sad about that. <laughs> make, make sure nobody yeah. wants to hear me talk. Dude. Make sure you come up and say hi for sure, then. Yeah, absolutely. I will. Uh, so just a little bit of context before I jump into my question. I've been training for 10 years and I got into fitness for the same reason as many people, which is that I had some body image issues, which really trace back to middle school when I was overweight. And ever since I got into training, I've been an avid consumer of health content, including Mind Pump. So I've listened to you guys since 2016 and I never miss an episode. And I think between the show and the YouTube channel, I think I've probably consumed just about everything that you guys have put out. And I've also run through several of the MAPS programs. So the past year has actually really been a big turning point for me on my health journey. I turned 30 years old and I also had my first kid, which was my son. And with that, I committed to finally overcoming my body image issues and to focusing on performance, which is something that I knew for a long time that I needed, but I've just really been putting it off. And I got map screen and jumped into it and it's really been awesome. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite maps program. And I can frankly say that I'm finally training because I love my body and not because I hate it. And I feel really confident in my physique and everything just feels really good right now. Um, I'm in fitness now for quality of life. I know Sal, you've talked a lot lately about how you're in fitness because of how it helps you excel and all the other parts of your life and because it's good for your mental health. And it's really the same way for me at this point, finally. Um, so I wrote into you guys because I have an interesting new challenge coming up, which is that I'll be having two hip surgeries over the next year. So I'm going to have limited access to my lower body, although obviously I'll be able to do some stuff with my upper body. So I'm just wondering what you guys think I should be focusing on from a, a training perspective during this time. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good question. You know, what's funny is that my, my answer is going to be different now than it would have been uh, even just 10 years ago. So studies are, are, there's some interesting studies on this and they've actually done this with people where they'll have one limb immobilized, like the left arm, and then they'll have the right arm not immobilized and they'll have the control group where they don't do anything with both arms and then they'll have the other group will, will train the arm that they can move to see if it creates a greater discrepancy, if it results in you know bigger imbalances or whatever. And, he, and what they found was when the people trained the arm that wasn't immobilized, it actually prevented some muscle and strength loss from the arm that was mobilized. Now, in the past, I would have told someone, don't train the parts of your body that can move because you'll create a bigger imbalance. Later on, it's harder to, to, to fix. That's not true at all. So when you aren't able to train your lower body, continue to train the parts of your body that you can. It'll actually prevent some strength and muscle loss in your lower body. And then before that, even more importantly, go into your surgery feeling strong and healthy because you're going to lose some strength and muscle. It's just going to happen. But the stronger you go into it, the, the fitter and more healthy you go into it, the better the recovery is going to be, uh, the better position you'll be in. And then, of course, don't forget about muscle memory. It's a real thing. It's very effective. It's really cool. So once you heal, you'll definitely notice, oh, my gosh, I lost a lot of strength and muscle. If you do everything right, it'll come back very quickly. And then the finally – uh, creatine, the wonder supplement. They're not, they're showing that creatine supplementation results in less muscle and strength loss uh, during recovery from surgeries than when people don't use it. So those will be the three things that I would recommend. When, Aaron, when did you say, when's the surgery coming up? December 28th. So it, it's a few weeks away. Oh, okay. So you are coming up close. Yeah. I mean, my advice would not be any different than Sal's. I mean, I really would, would just, the best thing you can do is to go into it with the most muscle. So staying consistent and building as much as you can going into that, so we could we can mitigate how much we lose. Uh, creatine will help doing will help doing that. But yeah, I would not stop. I just continue training uh, my upper body, working core, doing a lot of unilateral stuff. Uh, I would do that for my upper body, and then I wouldn't fret about what the muscle loss. That it's inevitable. It's going to happen because uh, it will. It'll come back pretty quick. And I think that's probably the most important part of this conversation. Is I would actually. 
uh, I would love to follow up with you after the surgery mm -hmm. when it's time to get back into things with, cause to me, that will be the most important thing. And the, the thing that you'll have to be careful of is, uh, you know, we tend to have this tendency, especially when we've been consistently working out, you see, you lose this muscle, you start to feel better and then you want to get after it right mm -hmm. away. And you kind of set yourself back. That's yeah. very common. Um, so to me, uh, what what you do afterwards is even more important than what you continue to do. Why? Because yeah, just do some upper body stuff, continue lifting. That's pretty general advice. But when you get out, how you're feeling, how you're moving, uh, and what we kind of focus on really uh, really matters more. That's going to be the the hardest work is to to be able to control you know the tendencies of wanting to keep going because you felt good, you feel good right now, and you want to get back to that place. However, it may take a bit longer for you to heal and, and be able to adjust, but uh, to find those thresholds and to kind of slowly kind of work your way in that direction, all of, you know, the, those gains will come back. That's, that's going to be inevitable. Just it's the gradual approach that's going to win you the longevity in uh, your pursuits for, for maintaining this kind of fitness. Yeah, isometrics are really good, uh, by the way. When, when you get to the point when you can start moving a little bit, Isometrics, uh, you know, they're, they're safe because you're not moving through ranges of motion. They activate muscles. Are you going to have access to a, a good physical therapist afterwards, Aaron? Yeah, yeah. I'll be doing lots of PT. I've actually been doing PT for about a year and a half with him leading up to the surgery. So oh, I'll be doing PT. I also have a lot of equipment at home, a lot of dumbbells. Oh, dude. Have, now, do you have a therapist that comes to your house or do you go to a, a clinic? No, I, I know y'all are working with Luna now, but I actually go to a old school traditional PT. If you, if you want someone to come to your house, if you want to do supplemental physical therapy um, and it's super convenient, go to Luna. Um, they'll send someone to your house and they'll work with the current therapist. And I think it's probably going to be, still be covered uh, by insurance. But uh, I think your therapy is going to be key. A good physical therapist is worth their weight in gold when it comes to this kind of stuff. What, what are they telling you, Aaron? Uh, what's the time frame on that? I don't remember my last client that I trained with hip surgery. What's the time frame on recovery and getting back to things? So between the first and second surgery, there has to be at least four months that pass. He said probably somewhere between four to six months. And I'll probably be on crutches for about a month after each of them. They're not, it's not as severe as a hip replacement because it's a bereavement, but probably about a month on crutches. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna be okay, but it's the, the struggle is gonna be mental. That's gonna mm -hmm. be the big struggle. You know, it's the in between aspect and, and stuff. But you'll bounce back quickly if you do everything right. Um, and you're you sound like you're going into it pretty fit. So I think if anybody has chances of a really good full recovery, it's going to be someone like you. And I know that this isn't uh, advice related to really muscle and fat loss and and movement, but. You know, when, when I have situations that are, uh, obviously I've never had hip surgery, but I've, I've definitely had knee surgery and I've torn my Achilles and I've been basically locked down from doing some physical stuff. I, I always like to find um, another area in my life to put my energy and focus on it with growth related. Like, so, uh, and that could be a lot of things. It could be diving into your relationship or to family stuff. It could be reading, um, but find an area of, of growth that doesn't, you're not limited to by your legs and your movement to kind of focus your energy That's on. So you don't, get discouraged by what you can't do. And, you know, I, to me like that, that, that's always been able to get me out of these places where I'm, I'm in, incapable of doing something or I'm limited because of something that I can't control. Uh, and then I, I, I use that opportunity like, well, I can't do any of my leg stuff right now. And I can't, instead of, and instead of dwelling on that, I'm like, well, you know, that opens the door for me where I would be training my legs at least, you know, two hours out of, out of a week. Now I'm going to read instead, or I'm going to do something else that is, that's going to grow me somewhere else in my life. And I think that does tremendous things for, for your overall health. So Adam, is there, is there anything in specific in the, uh, in the library that you'd recommend? Ooh, uh, Ooh. what are you into right now? Obviously you're into fitness. I get that, but that's, that's boring for me to read. So I, what do you, what do you else are you into? Or is there stuff that you're into with like investing in finance or personal growth? Like where, where's your head at? Oh yeah. All of that. I'm also a marketing professor. So I do a lot of business books, but personal growth, finance, relationships, anything like that. Okay. Have you read the book Sway before? No. Check that out. So since you're into marketing and you like that, check the book Sway out. That was a fun read for me a um, long time ago. I forget the author. I'll have, maybe Doug will pull it up and then you'll, you'll catch a clip of it after we uh, post this up. But start there and then, hey, message me. Uh, I, you know, people message me all the time about what they're reading and give me. I love to talk to people about what they're currently reading and give suggestions. So 
I do have plenty of suggestions, especially if you send me like over like three books that you really like. Uh, normally one of them maybe I've read or I, I'm familiar with them and I can give a good recommendation to something related to that. Awesome. Sway, I got it. All right, man. All right, man. Cool. Thanks for calling right. in. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Take it easy. All Thank right. you. Yeah, you know, this makes me, I, I think back to the last like major uh, issue, issue I had physical was when I had uh, shoulder surgery. I had my AC joint resected. And I remember the doctor giving, I don't remember what the time frame was, but they told me something like, you can't work out for, it was something like eight weeks or something like that. And the challenge is this, is that as a fitness professional, you have a better pulse you know, on how your body's moving and what you can and can't do. But then the flip side is you, your tendency is to want to push it. Oh, yeah. But I'm mm -hmm. very, I was very proud of how I handled it. I remember I went to the doctor for one of my first or second follow-up appointments and he said, you know, can you, can, you, can you lift your arm up a little bit? And I went all the way up. And he looked at me like, what the hell? And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trainer. I know uh, correct, correctional exercise. I've been working on, on my own. And the doctor was blown away. And then he said, you know what's funny, Sal? He goes, we give these like time frames for, for how long you need to be off you know, your, your legs or how long you need to not lift anything over 25 pounds to the average person who doesn't do what you do to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. He goes, but it's obvious you can move things a lot faster when you had know how to apply the right exercises and, and techniques. And so yeah, it's really pretty cool. remarkable when you put the work in and you go into something like that, or even like, you know, pregnancy for, for instance, yeah. like how quick the rebound is when, you know, your body has that kind of uh, muscle memory and it has that, that uh, work already established. It, it, it remembers and, and it, you're able to kind of really rebound quickly. Yeah. My mind's still on the book thing. Doug, what was the name of the book you and I read last year? A story brand. Was that, Oh, yeah. How that, to Build a Story Brand, no. I believe. How to Build? I think it's just called uh, A Story Brand. It's called Building a Story Brand. Building a Story Brand. That's another one, Aaron. So if you listen to this afterwards when we when we publish, uh, that's another good read for your field and what you're into. If you, you, can, you can recommend that book that you're on the cover of, Adam. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Well, but I, nice romantic I, I, fiction. Seriously, though, there, this is, uh, and, and I, again, I know it's not related to muscle and, and movement and stuff like that. No, but I thought that was great advice. Yeah. I, I just think that... Um, you know, a lot of times we get so focused on what we can't do mm -hmm. um, when it's related to a lot of things in life, not just uh, working out in fitness. And when you're going through something like this, where you, especially if you love fitness, right? yeah, right, or you, it or even, an identity, or almost. like in his case, he has just a lot of momentum yeah. in, in this direction and his pursuit of health and in getting shape, and he's probably feeling really good. It can be very discouraging. Yeah, you feel like you're in the doldrums. Well, I've, I've I've dealt with this quite a bit with athletes, especially too, where they get injury and it's just it's detrimental because the, your mind it just starts spinning and it's like what I can't do, what I can't do, what I can't do, what can you do? Like, right. And I love that because it's like, yeah, let's refocus that and let's work on ourselves. There's more aspects to life than just this. 100%. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.